Hello, my name is Caroline de Guito, and I'm Curator of Decorative Arts at the Royal Collection. And I'm here to talk to you about this magnificent object. This is one of the greatest works of art produced by Karl Fabergé, the famous Russian jeweler and goldsmith. And this is one of the famous series of 50 imperial Easter eggs made for the Romanov family at the turn of the 19th, end of the 19th century and the turn of the 20th century. This particular egg is called the mosaic egg, and it's one of a series of 50 eggs made for the Russian imperial family by Karl Fabergé. Each egg is totally unique, totally individual, and they were made for the, very much for the private and personal consumption of the family. Easter, of course, is a very important celebration, um, especially in the Russian Orthodox calendar. And Easter was a, a time when there was a very strong tradition particularly again in Russia, of exchanging all manner of different eggs. So these could be hand-dyed hen's eggs, they could be little ceramic eggs or little jeweled eggs. And really, these eggs were the greatest expression of this exchange of gifts at um, Easter. The first imperial egg was made in 1885, and it was commissioned by Tsar Alexander III for his wife, Mary Fyodorovna. And he was so pleased with it that he decided to continue the tradition of commissioning Fabergé to produce these wonderful eggs. Each egg took over a year to actually make, and Fabergé was entrusted with deciding what the particular design or theme of the egg would be in a given year. Between 1885 and 1894, one egg was made each year, but when Tsar Alexander III died and he was succeeded by Tsar Nicholas II, Nicholas II decided to continue this tradition for his consort, Tsarina Alexandra Fyodorovna. But he also wanted to present an egg to his mother, the Dowager Marie Fyodorovna. And so between 1894 and 1917, when of course the Russian Revolution occurred, two eggs were made each year. So we end up with actually a total of 50 eggs all unique. This particular egg is the egg for the year 1914, and it was presented by Nicholas II to his wife, Alexandra. And it's technically one of the most extraordinary eggs that Fabergé produced. It was actually designed by one of Fabergé's female designers, a lady called Alma Peel. And she came from a long line of designers and craftsmen who worked for the Fabergé firm. She was, in fact, the granddaughter of August Holmström, who was Fabergé's senior jewellery maker. She started her career at the Fabergé firm as a draftswoman, and she actually designed her first imperial egg in 1913, so the year before this one. And that particular egg is known as the winter egg. For this egg, for 1914, she was inspired by watching her mother-in-law working at her petit point, sitting by the fire one evening. And she saw the light flickering from the fire across the petit point, and she decided that this would make a wonderful motif with which to decorate an imperial egg. And so on the six panels around the egg, you see this petit point motif, which is a stylized imagery of flowers. And the stones incorporated to depict these flowers are rubies, sapphires, demantoid garnets, diamonds, all manner of stones. And you can also see that the borders are set with white enamel, and within the bands and the borders are tiny seed pearls. They're actually half pearls applied in this decorative way. If you look closely, you can see that the egg consists purely of a cage of platinum. And you have to remember that this is made entirely by hand. This is not a machine-made cage. Each individual tiny square is cut by hand. And so we end up with this egg-shaped mesh into which these tiny little precious and semi-precious stones are slotted. And they're held purely by the means of the fact that they are perfectly cut and calibrated to fit the tiny spaces. Not every single part of the mesh is filled with a stone. And so when you look down at the egg, you can see almost straight through it. It's completely translucent. Within the egg itself is a gold framework. And this really gives it a kind of stability, a, a solidness. And 
Also, when we opened the egg, and when the Tsarina would have opened the egg on Easter morning, inside she would have found this object, which is known as the surprise. It features some of the same techniques. You have enamel, you have lots of Demontoy garnets, diamonds, and just in case you were mistaking where this object um, might belong or for whom it was made, right on top of this enameled uh, medallion is the Russian imperial crown, the Romanov crown, uh, made out of diamonds and platinum and with a tiny gold cross on top. And the surprise itself, when you look closely at the front, features the profile portraits of the five children of Tsar Nicholas II and Tsarina Alexandra, Olga, Maria, Tatiana, Anastasia, and the young Tsarevich, Alexei. And of course, in 1918, following the revolution, they, together with their parents, the Tsar and the Tsarina, were executed. On the reverse of the surprise is another enameled medallion, this time with a basket of flowers and with the names of the five children. I think the egg really expresses the technical virtuosity of Fabergé's craftsmanship. Fabergé was not only an astute businessman and a great designer, but he employed some of the best craftsmen at this particular time. His firm became the best and most sophisticated jeweler in uh, Russia, also later opening a branch here in London. And really this is an expression of the great attention to detail, the extraordinary craftsmanship, everything made by hand that his firm was particularly noted for. And right down to the detail on the top, underneath this cabochon moonstone, is the date and the cipher of the Tsarina, 1914, and the Tsarina's cipher um, AF for Alexandra Fyodorovna.